In this video we're going to look at finding the part in a percent type problem and we're going to do that using proportions. I have another video where I solve a similar type of problem using a formula. So if algebra is not your strong suit or if you don't have a lot of algebra background, this is another way that you can solve a, a percent problem without using a formula or algebra. In this problem we have that last quarter 30 percent of the students in an algebra class got an A. The class had 25 students. How many students got an A? So the first thing you need to recognize is that it is the part that we're looking for. In any percent problem, well let me take that back, in simple type percent problems, of course we could get super complicated multi multi step percent problems, but in your basic percent problems you're going to have um, three numbers that you're looking for which is the percent the part and the whole. And in the other video there's a formula that relates these three together so if you're interested in that you might take a look at that. But in our video what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the fact that if you take the part this is kinda like our little formula so to speak. If you take the part over the whole that's gonna equal or be the same as um, whatever number your percent, in this case would be 30, over 100. Remember percent means per 100. So in our case we have 30 percent of the students in an algebra class that got an A. So if there were 100 students that would mean that 30 out of 100 would have gotten an A. But there's not 100 students. There's only 25 students in the class. Now is this the part or the whole? Hopefully you recognize that's the whole. That's the entire number of people in the class. And we want to know how many out of 25 would be the same as 30 out of 100. Now it's kind of starting to look like an equation here, but um, that's okay. I'll show you a way to do it without writing any kind of equation. Let me get rid of this, and I'm going to move this over here so we can continue to look at that. Okay, so here's a little, I'm going to call this a trick, and, and I'm not a huge fan of, of tricks to do math, but I'm going to go ahead and show you this anyway, for those of you that may have seen this before. You make a little chart like this, and then you fill in these numbers, the part over the whole and the percent over 100. So we don't know what the part is, over 25 equals the percent, which is 30, over 100. Now the percent is always over 100. I mentioned that a second ago, but that's important to know. So remember, we, we need to find the part, the whole, and the percent, and we're going to know two out of those three things from the story problem, and one of them we're going to have to find. Okay, so now what you'll notice is that your question mark, whatever it is you don't know, is going to be across from some number, in this case the 100, and then there's going to be two numbers, diagonal or across from each other, that you do know. So the trick here is to multiply the two numbers that are across from each other, and then divide by the remaining number. So to figure this out, we're going to multiply 25 times 30. So we have to do 30 times 25. And let's see, what is that? 25, I think that would be, um, let's see, 25, 750, I think. It's 3 times 25 is 75, right? And then we have a 0, so 750. Okay, and then whatever this number is right here, that's across from your question mark, you always divide by that. And this one we can do in our head. When you divide by 100, you just move the decimal two places to the left. Sometimes people forget which way do I move it, left or right. Well, if you're dividing by 100, it needs to be a smaller number than 750. 750 divided by 100 is going to be smaller than 750. So that would tell you which way to move your decimal to get a smaller number is going to be to the left. And we're going to move it two places since there's two zeros in 100. So the answer here is 7.5. So what that tells us is that not exactly um, 30% of students got uh, got an A. This must have been rounded somehow because we can't have 7.5 students. So we could round that up and say approximately 8 would be a good way to do that. So about 8 students got an A. Okay, so that's the little that's the little formula on how you do those. Let's look at one more. Maybe I'll put it up there and um, 
see if you can set it up pause the video see if you can set it up and make it work and then when you think you have your answer go ahead and start the video again all right so let's look at the numbers that we have Tim spent 40 percent of his day at work how many hours per day is Tim at work well this is a little weird we only have one number here we only have the 40 percent so there must be another value in this problem that we can uh, deduce from what we know how many hours per day is Tim at work well how many hours are in Tim's day how many hours in a day that would be 24 right so we have the part over the whole equals whatever number is by your percent that number right there over a hundred okay so 40 over a hundred and then the part over the whole we don't know the part we don't know what part of Tim's day he spends at work out of how many hours per day that would be 24 hours in a day okay so same technique you're gonna multiply the numbers that are across from each other 24 times 40 let's see 24 times 4 would be 96 and then so 40 would be 96 with a 0 and then we are going to divide by the number that's across from the question mark again you're gonna move the decimal two places to the left when you're dividing by a hundred and that will give us 9.6 so that's 9.6 hours in the day now if you wanted to figure out how many minutes this is nine hours and then you've got 0.6 and you want to know how many minutes that was well how many minutes are in an hour 60 right so you would take the 0.6 and you'd multiply that by 60 and that would tell you how many minutes is in 0.6 hours because there's 60 minutes in an hour so that would give us 36 we've got one place here it's a good review of decimals so we move the decimal one place this way we get 36 so that'd be nine hours and 36 minutes well I hope that helped and uh, this is one way to solve these kind of problems and the other way is using a, f a formula so I would encourage you to watch both ways and then decide which way that you like better I will tell you that as percent problems get more difficult this strategy right here doesn't work so well this strategy really only works well for these type of maybe one step type problems so it's good to learn both ways and uh, the more ways you know how to do math then the easier it's going to be to solve all kinds of different problems